So, um, at the risk of asking a horrible question, why do you want TB? You mentioned that you wanted to make Glamour. bacteria glow, but why do you want to bring it in? So, TB is is just an amazing disease. Um, so, about a third of the world's population are infected with TB, and most people... <laughs> Really, most Probably. people would never would never know because um, your immune system's pretty good at holding it in check. So you essentially get infected, and then your it stays in your lungs, and your body just sort of keeps it at bay um, for the rest of your life. And then most people get active disease um, when they get older, or if they become immunocompromised, if they become HIV positive, if they um, become homeless. So. so stresses on your immune system then means that you can't keep it in check anymore and then it goes rampant and it's and it's thought that about I think 10% of people who are infected will go on to get active disease so when you've got 2 billion people who are latently infected so we call this latent when it's not active that's an awful lot of people who can go on to get disease and I guess the point is that um, we do have drugs for TB but they're really awful they're really old um, I think that 40 years ago was the last drug that was actually, um, you know, that c came about. And so you have to take a combination of about four drugs for the short course of treatment is six months. Mm. So four drugs for six months, old drugs, which are really nasty to your liver. You know, they, they interact horribly with other drugs that you might be taking, say, if you're diabetic. So they're pretty nasty stuff. So most people feel pretty rotten. Mm. And so most people don't, well, a lot of people don't, finish the course and if you don't finish a course of antibiotics then the the bugs become resistant to them so we now have strains of tb that are multi-drug resistant so they are resistant to at least one or two of those four drugs but we also have drugs uh, we have bugs sorry that are um we call them extremely drug resistant so they are now resistant to all those four and to the kind of second line sort of backup drugs that we have so in essentially they are now completely untreatable and the only thing you can do with people like that is either cut out the bits of their lungs that's infected and hope that you leave enough lung for them to breathe with or you lock them away and and, and that's it, and throw away the key until pretend to we come up with a new drug. So there's a real need for, for everybody in the world to be working on finding new drugs and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so the kind of technique that I do where we make glow-in-the-dark bacteria, um, we so TB is a bug that takes a long time to grow. It's kind of one of the reasons why people hate working with it. So my E. coli bugs, they will divide every 20 minutes. So if you, um, you, know, you put some bugs in the incubator, the next day you go and they're all growing the beautiful. TB takes 24 hours to grow, to, to divide. This is why it's such a good, um, it's why it hangs around in our lungs for so long. It just sort of tends to not do very much at all. So um, so this bug, you put it in the incubator and you come back a few weeks later and it's, and it's grown. So the, the fact that it grows so slowly kind of um, makes everything take so long to do anything. So the whole drug discovery, this is why it takes so long because you just, you know, it takes so long to grow. So with our stuff, we make it glow in the dark and then we don't have to wait for it to grow. We just look for light instead. So um, it makes looking for drugs and things much quicker. So we can, um, for instance, put our glow in the dark TB uh, inside of mice and then check whether um, the sort of new drugs that we've got might work. And instead of having to wait months and months after we've killed those mice to find out whether, whether the TB are growing or not, um, on petri dishes we just look for light instead and we can kind of track them inside of animals and stuff as well so oh. um so it's really exciting that that um we're going to have all this facility so i've been doing this kind of research cool. in london and haven't been able to do it in new zealand because we didn't have facilities <laughs> and now right. the universities are making these facilities so we shall soon be getting some some nasty strains of tb and doing something with them so that's Sorry, really that's a bit long, yeah, that was a bit long-winded, wasn't it? <laughs> no, 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 that's no, fantastic. that's fantastic. It's interesting. Funnily enough, um, so uh, I, I did uh, my undergr undergrad degree in um, Cape Town, and the Western Cape in South Africa has one of the mm. highest rates of multi-drug-resistant tuberculosis yeah. in the world, uh, as you would know. <laughs> and my, funnily enough, my undergrad thesis was uh, looking for novel anti-tubercular um, antibiotics. Oh, really? Wow. We didn't find any unfortunately okay. it is it is kind of the needle in the haystack issue there yeah. um but apparently every i mean they did it with 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 every year that came through just as mm. a way of like 
getting yeah, as much trying, testing done yeah. as possible. And every couple of years, a kid would come up with something that looked vaguely promising, and then it would get passed up to the PhDs and the postdocs and, and yeah. further to go and see, you know, and then how well it did. And probably fail at some stage, because it takes probably. an awful lot of hit oh, compounds God, yes. to actually make a drug. But one of yeah. the great things about New Zealand is that um, we've got a fantastic group of medicinal chemists at Auckland University. So they're part of the Auckland Cancer Society Research Center. And um, a few years ago, they opened up all their compounds to TB research. And so two of the new drugs that are going into clinical trials for TB come from Auckland. So I think, you know, one of the, I guess one of the things that we have to justify, you know, why are we doing this in New Zealand? You know, because frankly, we don't have huge numbers of TB cases like there are in other bits of the world. But no. we're only a plane ride away from anywhere you know anybody with tb we, all the cases of drug resistant and and we have had extreme drug resistant cases in auckland have come from people who've you know landed on a plane and then and then there they are with their infectious drug resistant tb um but also you know we have a responsibility to be part of this effort to to fix mm. it and as a small nation we have much to be proud of that we already have you know we're already playing a huge role um in in hopefully in finding new drugs so we're just sort of I've arrived and I'm just sort of trying to slot into this you know success that Auckland already has <laughs> fantastic and I'll, it's a lovely idea I'll just uh, sorry Alfie was saying I'm just going to plug my uh, Fano from uh, Victoria University that are also working on a similar problem right. instead of looking at your approach they're looking at a uh, similar a genetically similar bacteria that grows much much faster and they're testing drugs against that um, so, to try and come up with compounds yeah so smegmatis probably like yep, that's right. yeah so there's so there's certainly there's, and there's a there's a kind of pipeline so you you start with you know those easy drugs, those easy bugs, because they're not dangerous. And then, but at some point, you have to try the real deal. I would say. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. All right, that's um, that's great, Susie. <laughs> Thank Unless you want to say anything about your uh, your take on uh, the film Contagion. <laughs> oh, only that everybody has to go and see it. It's amazing. Um, but as with all science films, they don't know how to use a centrifuge, and I just Nobody find does. this astonishing. Like just the whole enhance, enhance, the thing. enhance the thing. thing. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> that was the only moan I had. I, otherwise, I loved it. And I just thought the lingering shots of people coughing and then touching surfaces was just fabulous. It's really terrifying. Um, kind of part of me as a microbiologist really wants one of these, you know, amazing pandemics to come through and everyone will go, yeah, look, look how incredible bugs are. But the mm. other one is, you know, actually... I, I don't really want huge numbers of people no. wiped out really fast. Screaming and actually, dying. Actually, on that on that quick note, b before we wind up the interview, uh, to all of our listeners and to Susie, if you've not seen it, there's a phenomenal uh, television show, predominantly Canadian, called Regenesis that came out several years ago now and has been through okay. several seasons and is, I have to say, uh, microbiologically and virologically correct uh it, it even spawned an entire website explaining the science behind um the stuff that they were writing up on the whiteboards and ah. discussing and things very cool i hadn't awesome. heard about that yeah, that's fantastic <laughs> all right um and As so any of our making it up <laughs> <laughs> and to any of our listeners that are interested in finding out uh more about uh susie you can have a look at the sideblogs mm. website um and search for uh, infectious thoughts. Yep. And if you want to find out more scientific information about uh, any of the stuff we were talking today, uh, a fellow podcast, TWIV, This Week in Virology, which is run and made by a, a Columbia, sorry, a professor of virology at the University of Columbia in the States, uh, runs a podcast. Their episode five is about herpes viruses, of which... Um, of which the chickenpox virus, varicella zoster, is one. So you can find out all the sorts of information, why it has two different phases, what the treatments are, why the vaccine is, is good, and all that junk over there. Other than that, thanks for joining us today, Susie. Oh, it was great fun. Thanks for having me. <laughs> and I'm sure we'll see you get back again soon. I hope so. <laughs> Bye. Bye.